the Marsh, and I'm going to show you uh, just a fun little 1940s old Hollywood glamour style uh, makeup with a wind cat eye, some good mascara, some shimmery cheeks, and a good solid red lipstick. So let's get started. Um, I have already primed my face because I think it's really boring for me to sit here on camera and show you me putting on moisturizer. So I'll show you um, what I did and the list will be as always in the credits. Uh, Miso Lift Eyes. For my eye area, it keeps the eyes under eyes plumped up and keeps any fine lines from appearing. Lux Me, um, the Creme de Nil, uh, it's a little bit goes a long way, so it gives a really good solid moisturizer. Um, and then because I don't want to be shiny, I use the Scandinavia Primer, uh, it keeps that shine and control. Um, and then I use the Bioderma, um, it's, it's mostly in French, but it does have the translations on there, it's the Pore Refiner, and I really love this product for myself and for uh, clients because it kind of tones down the shine, keeps the skin looking like skin, and minimizes pores. Everybody loves that. And then I did put a little bit of the A Cosmetics uh, Confidence in an Eye Cream. It's got a little bit of an apricot tint to it and uh, within a few minutes it helps brighten the under eye area. And because I am so fair, that does tends to be a problem. And also, with darker skin tones, it can be a problem as well. So now that my skin's all primed and ready, uh, I'm going to use the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Compact in Light and one of their fun little brushes that I am trying out today. And this is just going to be, uh, it has an SPF 50 in it, but it doesn't have flashback, which is great for camera use, but also kind of fun for everyday use, so just kind of, I can hold it for you, tap it in there like that, you know, get some on the brush, I'm going to use my handy little hand mirror here, and I don't know why, but I always start on my chin, and I have a little, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a little blemish there, I've never had a zip there before, but, well, first time for everything, so I'm just kind of Pat that in. It's really light. It's got a dewy finish, which is why I used all the mattifying primers. They help it to last longer, sit better. Get up over the eyes. Kind of pat lightly around your eyes and try to avoid your eyebrow area. Just kind of go around it. Tap, 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 tap on the face. And I like this because it does have an SPF 50 in it, so it's helping protect my big old forehead from the sunlight, getting sunburned. And I have a tendency to get hyperpigmentation as I get older. Which is a real pain in the butt because I don't want to have to cover it every day. So that helps avoid that. And then I just kind of brush the eyebrows back up into place, maybe a little bit more under this eye. Okay, there we go. There's that. And uh, this you can build up. It can be more full coverage. I did it as a more of a sheer coverage just to even out the skin tone and just because I did want to have that SPF on my full face. Um, next we'll be getting the cheeks with a cheek tint because it lasts all day. It's dewy fresh, beautiful. Just get a little bit of that on your finger and kind of tap it in the apples of the cheeks and tap it up a little bit more, get the other cheek and tap it up. I know a lot of people are scared of cheeks hints, but there's not really any reason to be. And if you do, for whatever reason, mess it up or get a splotch too dark that you can't blend out, for whatever reason, which I very rarely ever have happened, you can just take a little bit of a makeup remover wipe or some makeup remover on a wand, like a, a sponge or a Q-tip, and just off your face. Um, so that you see I just have like a natural kind of flush. We don't want to be too rosy in the cheeks. 
And then I'm going to use Away We Glow by NYX Cosmetics. It's a liquid highlighter, which is one of my favorite things. Just get a little bit of that. Dab it right here, just to make those cheekbones pop. A little bit more, dab it right here, make those cheekbones pop. I kind of take it up, blend it out. Just a touch on the chin, not the chin, but the jawbone. A little bit more right here. And then I always hit just a little touch right there because I like the shape of my nose. I never take it down to the tip of the nose. You don't want to have a shiny nose. It defeats the purpose of putting on a primer to keep you from looking shiny. And then sometimes you can add less, a little bit of Cupid's Bow highlight. Really subtle. You don't want to look like you have a glitter lip, but you just want to have some of that highlight on there. Okay, so that's two steps down out of the way. And if I was in my bathroom, I would just rinse my hands off, but since I'm at a table, I'm in a video, I'm going to wipe them off with a handy dandy makeup wipe. I usually use this for my hands and not my face. Um, next, I will go into my eyebrows. Um, I'm using the Super Skinny Brow Power from It Cosmetics. I really like this one. Um, it's in their darkest shade because I have uh, black hair, um, and it looks really natural. Uh, if you need something that you want to look unnatural, you're going to have to go to another brand for that because they do mostly pretty natural, very pretty stuff. So I'm just going to start in at the inside corner of my brow and then do little sweeping motions up following just the underside of my eyebrow, keeping along the underside. So you can see that's fully lined. And then you do these tiny little motions because they look more natural. They look like your natural hairline. And then up at the top, tiny little motions, tiny little motions down, and then fill it out a little bit more. Turn it around, it's got the handy dandy little um, spoolie on the end, but I'm going to use this spoolie instead. I like disposable spoolies, they're huge and they take up most of my eyebrow and get it done faster. So again, starting at the inside corner right here and then going up to the arch and then out. Tiny little motions. And when you're starting here, remember that you go from the inside corner of your eye and that's where you start your eyebrow. And then when you're looking at yourself, you should just be like your arch should be right there. You look in the mirror nose to pupil, eyebrow arch, and that's just how you go. Most eyebrows have that kind of natural arch anyway. Some of them you have to get some plucking done or some waxing to get it done. So then go in here and fill this in. Just those little motions. And then go into the top. And you're not doing like a big thick brow, you're just Kind of defining what's already there. Take your spoolie again, put it up and through. Also, even though these come with the spoolie on the end, which is really handy if you're traveling or something, you have to clean those, and I find cleaning the spoolies a pain in the butt, so sometimes I just cheat and use disposables on myself. And I just need a little bit more filling in. And then blend it out. Because life is about blending when it comes to makeup. Okay. So, now we're into the eyes. Pretty quick. I am using um, the Sephora Collection um, Colorful Shadow and Liner. I swear by these stupid little pencils. They are waterproof, so they last for a really long time. Um, if you find, especially like during the summer, that you, your 
eyeshadow creases or smudges off or just comes off in general, if you use one of these in a natural, closer to your shade color, it's a great base to put your eyeshadow on and it doesn't compete with it, but it does give it a little more depth. So you can see how nice and shiny that is, but also how well that blends out. So I'm just going to smear it all over my eyelid, basically. And I go up to my brow with this. You don't have to be really clean or neat because you're going to blend it out with your finger. There's really nothing wrong with using your fingers to do makeup. And then I get the under eye, that bottom lid. Oh, I'm just going to start with the bottom one here. Blend it out with my finger. Smear all over the top lid again. Go up on my brow. Blend it up. With those, just, you don't push really hard because it's your eyeball, it's your eyelid. You just don't want to push too hard on that. So you just use this finger because it's got the lightest touch. And just tap it out with your fingertip. Next, we're going to do some eyeshadow. And I am using the Magnified Eyes by Rimmel London. I absolutely love this cheap little wonderful, wonderful, wonderful eyeshadow palette. Um, my favorite one is the, uh, it's like grunge glamour, grudge glamour, grunge glamour, because I already lived through the grunge period, so why not revisit it a little bit. Um, I'm going to use um, a little bit of this dark brown, a little bit of this taupey shimmery color, and a whole bunch of this shimmery light color. I'm just going to get the dark brown first with a small brush. Go in just lightly on that corner. And you don't have to be really precise with this. You can be really soft and messy because you're just going to blend it all out. And then just kind of tap it off on a towel or, you know, just tap it off like this and then grab, grab a little bit more of that taupey color. I can show you rather than doing it. This right here. And I'm going to hit that up along my brow bone. And again, being a little sloppy with it because you're going to blend it out. And then taking a larger, fluffier brush and grabbing this lighter, shimmery color. And then I'm going to go from the inside corner of the eye and blend that out on top of what's right there. And go out and up and over. And you kind of combine the two, mix the color, let them play a little bit together. Look up. Let it mingle. So you can see that my crease is a little bit more shadowed than this one and still very illuminated. And then I'm going to grab a little bit more of that taupey color with the fluffy brush. And go back up and over. And you're doing kind of a half crescent moon style along the brow bone. Not under the brow bone, not in the crease, but just above that crease. And then we're going to do it all over again on the other eye. So, small brush, darker brown, get it in there a little bit, tap it off, grab some of that taupey color, pull it up and over on that brow bone, just above the crease, that half crescent moon. Grab some of that lighter shimmery color. Pull it across the lid and then let it blend with that outside corner. Get a little bit more if you need to. And then pull it up and over that taupe. So you can see that the darker corner on the outside is just present but not too present. And then grab some more of that taupe, the big fluffy brush over that brow bone again. 
because mixing colors is a little, it's like folding them together. A little bit of this, 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 until you get just the right effect. Um, and then I'm going to take some of that topi and put it on this corner. Because blending colors and building them up gives you more depth of color and it's much prettier than just a flat, flat color. And I'm going to take this skinny brush again, look up, get just a touch on the outside under corner of my lid. Try not to put myself in the eye while I do it. All right, and so you see we've got the shimmery eyes, we've got a nice little pop to the crease. You don't want to have a totally cut crease unless that's the look you're going for. But what you want to stand out is that beautiful liner. So I'm going to use a NYX liner. It's a little liquid liner that I've actually come to really love. It's got the felt tip, which I prefer over the brushy tip. Um, this is called the Epic Liner. Um, and let's get started on that. See how I can do this on myself while <laughs> filming a video, but we'll see. So I usually start where I want that to hit, so I want it to hit over here. So I grab it here, pull it in just like that, and then just fill in underneath that. And just making nice brush strokes with it. So there's like, just if you wanted to do just a short wing liner, you can use this very easily for that. But we're gonna go for the full, beautiful vintage cat eye. So now that I've gotten it about halfway across my lid, start at the inner corner. And then match that middle part and then fill in. And then go down to the lash base. And fill that in. See how easy that was with this little liner? It's amazing. I don't use these on set because they're difficult to clean in between uses for people. So I always use an angle brush with a gel liner, which works just as well when I'm working on other people. But for myself, I do enjoy this. And it lasts a really nice long time. So again, just gonna go to that outside corner and then pull in towards the center and work that line bigger. When you're getting used to doing a cat eye on yourself, baby steps. So start with where you want it to end up and little brush strokes to build it up, okay? So I'm gonna do this out there. Make sure that they're about the same. And just fill in. So I always grab from the outside tip and then bring it straight to the corner of my eye. So there's that outside tip, and I bring it straight to the corner of my eye. And then work this towards the center of my eyelid. And there's that. And then now, like I said before, you just go from the inside corner and match it up to that outside corner, well, the middle. You just make sure that this line matches, matches the center and that this, the outside matches the center. And it's really easy. And then, like I did on that one, you just go through to that lash base and work the tip in. And there's a nice big classic winged liner, which is really fun. Um, and this stuff lasts a really long time, which is nice. Uh, then mascara and lipstick and we're done. So super fast. If you wanted to pop some lashes on, I would, but go with something more dainty. Um, you don't want the lashes to overpower or hide the beautiful cat eye that you just did. So this is my favorite mascara in the whole world. Um, it's Superhero by It Cosmetics. It's conditioning. And it's built up really nicely, so it makes your lashes look full. 
and long. And I always go in and grab at the bottom of my lash and then spin it up. Grab at the bottom, spin it up. Grab at the bottom, spin or swoop it up. And then look up. You can kind of grab these little guys there. As you can see the difference. It's very clear. I have really fair eyelashes for some reason. So they're long, but they don't show up until I get mascara on them. And then, again, wiggle it into the lash base and pull up. Wiggle it into the lash base, pull it up. Lash base, pull it up. Because when you pull it into the base of your lashes and then spin it or pull it up, it actually, as it dries, lifts your lashes up. And then go through them all with one more quick little swoop. It's like magic. I love mascara. It's like my favorite thing in the world. Okay, I'm going to use um, this fun little lipstick by Krylon. It's a matte. It's a classic red. And this is my own personal one, not for my kit, so I will put it on myself. If I was using it on someone else, I would scrape some of it off and put it on a palette. Um, so you just go in, and I always grab the center of the lips first, and just kind of build out. Blot it together a little bit, but don't blot too much. Sometimes I ask people to blot, and they go like, all over and the next thing you know is it's blotted up to their nose and down to their chin. So just blot it a little bit gently. And then grab that outside, pull it towards the center, outside to the center. And use the angles of these things to really shape your lips. And then go up to the Cupid's bow right here in the center. Up. And over. Up. And over. There you go. That's your final look. Um, this lasts a nice long time too. So there's your 1940s glamour, your old Hollywood glamour, your pinup. Super easy. See you soon. Hope you enjoy it. If you like it, subscribe to my page, watch more of my videos. Bye.